Thanks a lot for having me here and thanks to everyone for attending. Today I'm talking about how to sell hard information. And this is a paper joined with Nima, Najib, and Ron. Uh, please feel free to ask any question, clarify question or comments during the talk. So think about the following environment. An agent would like to sell an asset to a market. The agent can acquire some hard information from some third party information intermediary. By presenting this piece of hard information to the market, he, can, he might use it to improve his term of trade. So some example of this kind of interactions are uh, thinking about a seller selling a financial asset who can acquire financial rating to convince the buyer that this is a high quality asset a worker trying to get some professional certificate in order to um, bargain in for better wage. And in the case of uh, students, it is often the case that uh, taking some standard, standardized tests and uh, reviewing the result, the scores to the academic program can help the application. So we see this kind of interaction uh, prevalent in a lot of trading relationship. And there are different views of intermediary. In the positive side, people think that it might help alleviate agency problems. For example, there could be some adverse selection or moral hazard problem due to estimation information. And the information provided by intermediary might help alleviate this kind of uh, estimation information issues. Or there could be some heterogeneity between the uh, some worker and the firms and you want to match high quality worker with better firms. So intermediary might help facilitate assertive matching. Or just there's some social value, probably intrinsic value or just indirect value of transparency and, informa and information intermediary can provide this kind of value. So these are the positive signs. However, there are concerns about the existence of intermediary might create commitment and market prejudice. So what do I, what do I mean by this? So think about an example. Let's take the standardized test example, say GRE. Now since GRE exists, there's this kind of test. The graduate program might expect that, might expect in equilibrium that I'm going to take the GRE test. So even if I didn't take the test, if I, if I don't provide any score result to the graduate program, program, they might think that I took the test and I try to conceal the best score. I receive a best score. I am not disclosing the best score. So uh, this creates a market prejudice of not taking the test. So I feel compelled to take the GRE test, even if it might not of my interest. And due to, due, to this, in my, uh, due to this kind of uh, commitment problem, I might, uh, it might allow the intermediary to appropriate a large amount of grants. In this paper, we are, take, we are focusing on this negative side. We shut down all the positive value of the intermediary. We're asking, even if an intermediary creates no social value, how much plus can she extract by just by her very existence. In particular, we're analyzing a model where a profit maximizing intermediary who creates no social value. The intermediary design a test and the agent can voluntarily take the test and voluntarily disclose the score. So there's nothing extraordinarily force the agent to use the intermediary. Everything is voluntary. And as, as you will see later, there could be multiple equilibria. And the equilibria is chosen adversarially against the intermediary. So all these uh, factors are ag against the intermediary. Even in this case, can the intermediary capture a good proportion of surplus? And it turns out the answer is yes. How she's, how she's going to do so, she creates no value. And 
uh, people voluntarily use it or not. So we're going to show you that the intermediary by creating an option value can to tempt the agent such that the agent indeed feel compelled to use the intermediary, even if she can voluntarily use it. In equilibrium, she has to use it. And we're going to show that using noisy test will allow the intermediary to extract a larger proportion of the surplus. All right, and any questions so far? If not, I'm going to introduce the formal model. The model is as follows. There's an agent who plans to sell an asset in a competitive asset market. We model the competitive asset market as to risk neutral buyers bid for the asset. So the Bertrand competition will lead to the buyers to get zero profit. The asset there too, the value of the asset could either be one or zero. So for most of the talk, we will focus on this binary simple example. But in the end, I will uh, discuss how uh, how our result extend to any general problem. All, uh, all players are symmetrically uninformed about theta with the same prior a half. That is half probability is a high value asset one, half probability is a zero value asset. So without the intermediary, the asset is priced at a half because there's a prior a half and the Bertrand competition drive down the price to the value of the asset. So this is the benchmark case that there's no intermediary and this is a trading game. The agent receives a full supply, a half. This is all games from trade because the agent doesn't value the good itself. This is the benchmark, no intermediary. Let's look at the role of the intermediary here. The intermediary chooses a test fee structure. That is a test and two fees. What is a test? A test is a mapping from the quality to some distribution over scores. So here we normalize because the only thing matter is that conditional on the score was the expected quality. So we normalize the score such that you can take the face value of the score. If you receive a value, uh, a score say uh, three quarter, then it means that the expected quality of receiving the, this score is three quarter. This is just a normalization. So an example, some simple example of test is a fully revealing test. A fully revealing test will provide two score, either one or zero, or a fully uninformative test will, will only provide one score that is a half. The intermediary can charge a testing fee and a disclosal fee. The agent has to pay the testing fee to take the test and pay a disclosal fee to disclose his score. And if the agent decides to have the asset testing, he observes the score realization and choose whether to disclose the score. By disclosing, we mean that the agent can send out a message. If the agent has a message, a, a score S, he can either send out a message S, which is his score, or send a non-message, which represents no disclosal, because disclosal is voluntary. You cannot force the agent to report his score. He can either disclose or not. If the agent chooses not to have the asset testing, then he has no score to disclose. And after the disclosal, the market observes either a disclosed score or no disclosal, and then pay a price that equals to expected uh, quality of the asset given obs observation. It might be more clear to look at this uh, extensive form of the disclosure again. I saw a question there, right? Yeah, Eva has a question. Uh, so I can't just say I took the test without disclosing the score? Yeah, you cannot prove that. But yeah, you, so. So can I, I say can... I took the test, but I'm not telling you the score? Uh, we're not allowing this in the model, but allowing that will not change our result. What will change our result is that you can prove that you didn't take the test. If you have something to prove that I, I didn't take the test, then this will avoid the market prejudice. 
So it might be more clear later. But at this point, even if we allow the agent to prove that they just take the test, it's okay. So the disclosure game is as follows. The agent decide whether to take, take the test or not take the test. If he decides to take the test, he, pay, he pays this testing fee VT and observe a score, which is distributed according to the test. After observing the score, he can decide whether to disclose or not disclose. If disclosed, he has to pay this disclosure fee. Disclosure will lead to a market observing the score S. And no disclosure will be pulled with no testing. This is essential because the market cannot distinguish whether you, you took the test but concealing your score or you didn't take the test. So market either observe a score or no disclosure. If a score is observed, because only, a, only someone with score S can send out a message S. So the, then the market price, excuse me, the market price equals to the expected uh, quality given the score calculated by the test, which doesn't depend on the strategy. So it is just as we normalize the score, the price of, of observing a score S will just be S. And, but in the, but when observing no disclosure, this price will be endogenously determined in equilibrium because it depends on which score choose not to disclose. They will affect the expected quality of the asset conditional on no disclosure. Okay, so this is the endogenous part. Right. Okay, we have defined the game after the intermediary design test fee structure, this is the game played uh, by the agent and the market. What's the intermediary's objective? As we have mentioned, intermediary only cares about her profit. She try to maximize her profit. But here there's this multiple equilibrium issue. The induced disclosure game because the price of no disclosure is endogenous. There could be many equilibrium. So we consider the intermediary maximize, maximize her profit while being robust to this kind of multiple equilibrium. That is, choose a test fee structure, consider the worst possible equilibrium among their test fee structure and the profit. Strictly speaking, this should be soup and in because of the closeness problem. Right, this is the problem. So at the first glance, it might look like a complicated problem. There's- Can I ask a, a, a sure. very silly question? If you did not assume that, would your, would your results change? Yes, yes, it will change. So say so if the engineer a... is more optimistic, ah, if there are multiple equilibria, I'm just going to think that it's the best of these equilibria. I'm going to base my fee structure on that. Yes, yes. We have a result of that. That will result in all the surplus goes to the intermediary. But we show that there's something very striking in this equilibrium is that it is very vulnerable. We show that in the case where you choose max, max, so that is you, you, you are very optimistic, you consider the best equilibrium. Then any test fee structure that do the best in this environment would give a zero profit in the worst equilibrium. Is it clear? So if you think you always hope for the best and you design a test fee structure, hope for the best, then in the worst case, it gives you zero profit, you get nothing. So it's very vulnerable, that kind of test fee structure. So this kind of motivate why you should, why you might care about robustness. Does it answer the question? Thanks. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, but th that's a good question. It, it definitely changed the result. And that is more like the standard mechanical design approach where you can design a mechanism, also choose the equilibrium. Okay. So in this uh, problem is, it might, seem, it might seem complicated because you need to choose two fees, you need to design the test, 
given test list structure, you need to apply the worst equilibrium and consider profit. But it turns out that it gives a neat solution like this. The robust profit is, this is about like one minus one way about 63% of the surplus because total supply is half. So the intermediary can robustly capture this about 63% of surplus in this example. And the optimal test will produce exponential score. So this is just a quick preview of the solution. I'm not trying to explain at this moment why this is true and why where there's a exponential. So it might not make too much sense at this moment, but we're going to figure out why this is the case. This is the solution. So in the next few slides, I'm going to explain these two part tariff. We have testing fee, we have disclosure fee. So uh, the intermediary can use these two part tariff in order to understand what exactly role played by each fee. We're going to shut down the other channel that is allowing only testing fee and allowing only disclosure fee complete shutting down the other channel in order to understand what happens and why we want this fee. Okay. This is what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to discuss about using OD testing fee and it will ties to the option value created by the intermediary. And then I'm going to talk about disclosure fee, which is the key re reason that why the intermediary would want noisy testing. Any questions so far? Okay. So let's start with the testing fee. Uh, we start with a simple fully revealing test. That is a test produced two score, either one or zero. In a fully revealing test, and the intermediary charge no disclosure fee, only testing fee. Because all the profit comes from the testing fee, the intermediary who like the agent to take the test. Otherwise she got no profit. So she want to avoid the case where the agent doesn't take the test to be an equilibrium. Try to avoid this as an equilibrium because we're considered the worst possible equilibrium. So how she's going to do that? Suppose in equilibrium, the agent doesn't take the test. Because the agent doesn't take the test, no one no one has evidence, no one has score to present. So the market price of no disclosure is just a half. This is no testing. There could, so what can the agent do? How to kill, how to eliminate this equilibrium? So the, interme the intermediary wants that there could, there are some profitable deviation. What is a, a deviation? The agent can deviate to take the test. After, deviate, after this deviation, the agent gets either a high score one or a low score zero, but he doesn't need to disclose both of the score. If he's lucky, he gets a good score, he can disclose it and he'll receive a market price of one because only score one can send message one. But in the case that he had actually get a low score zero, he has the option to conceal it. He doesn't need to disclose a score zero to receive a wage zero. He still conceal it and the market doesn't know that he deviate to take the test. So this deviation provide an option value that you can disclose only if the test result is in favor, in favor of you. Okay. So this option value provide an incentive for the agent to deviate. So for this deviation to be profit, uh, profitable, as long as this option value is greater than the testing fee, then the agent would like to deviate. And the no testing cannot be an equilibrium. So by simple algebra, it will give a bound on how large the testing fee you can charge, which is one quarter in this example. As long as the testing fee is less than a quarter, 
as we show, the agent cannot credibly, credibly refrain from the test in equilibrium. In equilibrium, he has to take the test. So he has to always pay the testing fee. And this will give the intermediary a profit of VT. And as we argue, the highest testing fee she can charge is a quarter. So uh, the optimal testing fee is a quarter. We call that we are restricting our attention to the fully reviewing test so far. What about other tests? What about some other tests that might have some noise? Does it help the intermediary? In this case, without this closure fee, with only the testing fee, fully reviewing test is the best. And the intuition is very, uh, very simple. The testing fee equals to the option value. So the testing fee the intermediary can charge equals to the option value created by this test. How does the test create option value? It comes from that you create score dispersion. I have a high score, then I disclose. I have a low score, I choose not to disclose. This provides an option value. So a, a fully revealing test provides the highest dispersion over score. You can, you can see this by simply looking at the extreme case. In the fully uninformative test, it's just a score, a single score, a half. There's no dispersion. In the full revealing test, you have an extreme score one and zero. It gives you the large, largest amount of dispersion. So it cre creates the highest possible option value. So in this case, the optimal profit with OD testing fee among all possible tests is just a quarter. Right? This is for the testing fee. Uh, any question for testing fee? Next one, I'm going to talk about the disclosure fee. All right. In the disclosure fee case, we shut down the testing fee. We allow only for the disclosure fee at this moment. Suppose the intermediary, again, design a fully revealing test. We start with the simplest case of fully revealing test, which produce only a score one or a score zero. Now, because there's no testing fee, voluntary testing is not a concern. The testing is free, but disclosure is a concern because all the profit comes from, comes from the disclosure fee. The intermediary, the intermediary would like to avoid an equilibrium where both score choose not to disclose, then her profit will be zero. So this will be a very bad equilibrium for the intermediary because no one disclosed and her profit is zero. How to avoid this equi equilibrium? In this equilibrium, because no one disclosed, the market has correct belief in equilibrium, the no disclosal, uh, no disclosal price is a half. There's no hope for score zero to deviate to disclose because he's the lowest score. Why he want to disclose uh, his lowest score and receive a price of zero and potentially pay some disclosure fee. So there's no hope for score zero, but score one may have an incentive to deviate. If score one deviate, he can receive a price of one by presenting his score, but he has to pay the disclosure fee. So for this deviation to be profitable, it put a restriction on how large the disclosure fee the intermediary can charge. So as long as this disclosure fee is less than a half, score one would like to separate himself from the pool. He doesn't want to pool with the score zero and receive a price of a half. So, as long as the disclosure fee is not that large, it's less than half, in equilibrium, score one has to disclose. So we get this as an equilibrium. This is an equilibrium because now, again, score zero has no incentive to disclose. There's no deviation. Score one S also has no incentive to deviate because by not deviating, he receives a payoff of one minus VD but by deviation to, by deviating to conceal, he only received zero. 
Okay, so the maximum profit the intermediary can charge here, uh, can get here, is a half multiplied by VD. That is, this score one disclosed is with half probability, this agent will receive a score one and he will disclose and pay the disclosal fee. And the maximum disclosal fee is just a half. Right. This is for fully revealing test. We get the same number as what we got in the using only the testing fee. Does noise help? Again, we the intermediary can even if the intermediary uh, can use the accurate test, she doesn't need to do so. She can add some noise. She can create some noise in the testing. So here is the example. Let's fix the disclosal fee to be a half, but the intermediary can introduce a new score called three quarter. How she's going to introduce a new score? New score. What does three quarter mean? Three quarter means that when observing this score, the market knows that with three quarter probability, this is a, an asset of quality one. And with one quarter probability, is the asset quality is zero. So the, the expected quality is three quarter. Okay. Because we say that the score uh, is taken as the face value in order for this score represents three quarter, we can take one quarter probability, one quarter Q probability from score zero and take three quarter Q probability from score one. So this will give a result. Uh, uh, score with expected quality three quarter. So why the intermediary might want to use a no, new score? Because if, if she can induce this new score to disclose in equilibrium, now the probability of disclosure is Q plus 0.5 minus three quarter Q, which is greater than 0.5. So now the agent is going to disclose uh, his score with higher probability. And this could increase her profit if this is the case. But if the newly introduced score choose not to disclose, become an equilibrium, then she is in fact losing profit by introducing this new score. So she wants to avoid this equilibrium, but keep this good equilibrium where there are more disclosal more people pay uh, a larger proportion of the agent pay the disclosure fee. So how she's going to avoid this equilibrium? Again, by creating some profitable deviation. If this is an equilibrium, in equilibrium, again, the market has correct belief the price of no disclosure will equals to the expected asset quality conditional on either it is a score three quarter or it's a score zero. And sim simple algebra gives this formula. By deviating, the score, so score zero has no incentive to deviate as we mentioned many times. But score three quarter might want to deviate because by deviating, uh, he can get a uh, market price three quarter, which is greater than the price of pooling with this score zero. But he has to pay the disclosal fee. So as long as the disclosal fee is less than the difference of this deviation price and the equilibrium price of no disclosal, this deviation is profitable. For this to hold, it requires that we cannot put too much probability on three quarter. And what's the intuition? Why there's an upper bound on how much Q you can put on this three quarter? Because the larger the probability of this three quarter, the higher the expected, uh, the expected quality of this pool, which means the higher the price of no disclosure. Because the deviation always give uh, price of three quarter. So the no the higher the no deviation equilibrium 
no disclosure price, the lower the incentive to deviate. So you don't want to uh, put a large proportion of uh, population to be in this three quarter score. Otherwise you will get the bad equilibrium, okay? So as long as Q is not that large, the intermediary can ensure that this will be the equilibrium. The newly introduced score would like to disclose in equilibrium. And because the probability of disclosure now is greater than a half, she gets a profit that's strictly greater than one quarter, which is what she, the best she can get with a fully revealing test. So now we already saw that introducing noise could help by, by, by inducing more disclosure. But there's no particular reason why just three quarter or why, why, why just introduce a new score three quarter? Why not another score? Why not introduce more noise? There's nothing prevent the intermediary to do so. The intermediary might want to use even more noisy test, but with some constraint. The constraint is the same as what we just described. When introducing a new score, she has to ensure that you, there won't be a bad equilibrium such that this newly introduced score choose not to disclose in equilibrium. In particular, she want to introduce, uh, she want to induce this kind of unraveling. That is, first, the highest, highest score will always choose to disclose in any equilibrium because the highest possible price of no disclosure in equilibrium is just a half. And by the, 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 the payoff he get by disclosing is one minus the disclosure fee. So as long as this hold that is VD is less than half, the highest, highest score is always to disclose in equilibrium. And then the second highest score knows that if the, knows that if the highest score is going to disclose, then the highest possible no disclosure price will just be the expected score of those who are less than him. So as long as S2 minus VD, which is his payoff of disclosing, is greater than this highest possible no disclosure uh, price, given that score one is always going to disclose, then the second highest score is also disclosing. By iterating this argument, she want to induce such that all the score he cre uh, she, she creates would like to disclose, knowing that all the higher score are disclosing. So this is like the unraveling argument, except for the lowest score, lowest score say score zero, because there's no hope to have score zero to disclose. So intuitively, in the optimal, all these constraints should bind, which give uh, an equality. That is, for all those scores that she uh, introduced to disclose, this equality should hold. That is saying that the disclosure payoff equals to the no disclosure payoff if he is the highest score that is not disclosing. And by writing out this conditional exp 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 expectation expression using the CDF of uh, the score, say G, G is a CDF of the score, it, it is not hard to see that it is a linear ODE. A linear ODE, so it has a unique class of solution, which is exponential. And this is why we get an exponential. It comes from this kind of constraint by adding adding a score, but you don't want to introduce you don't want to uh, introduce this score not to disclose in equilibrium. And the unraveling argument leads to this extra exponentially distributed score. Okay, now I'm going to explain what does this mean. This is a test that 
produce a score zero with one over, one over e probability. There, there, there is a mass point of score zero. And then uh, there's no score between zero and a half. Above a half, scores are exponentially distributed smoothly from a half to one. And this will induce that score one is going to disclose. Then score one minus epsilon knows that score one is going to disclose. Score one minus epsilon is going to disclose. One minus two epsilon is going to disclose. So in equilibrium, all the score from a half to one will choose to disclose in equilibrium. Only this mass point of score zero, the lowest score, choose to conceal in equilibrium. So the total probability of disclosure is one minus this one over E, which is about 63%. And because the disclosure fee is a half here, the intermediate profit is a half multi multiplied by this one minus one over V. And this is the maximum profit the intermediary can get by using OD disclosure fee. At this moment, we still, we're still shutting down the testing fee. We're not talking about testing fee. With OD disclosure fee, that's the bet he can get, uh, she can get and it is strictly greater than one quarter. Recall that one quarter is the maximum profit by using only testing fee. So now this is saying using only disclosure fee will give you a strictly higher profit by using only testing fee. Uh, this is again the test because I only tell you the marginal distribution of score. But I didn't explain how a test can generate such a score distribution. So this marginal distribution, a marginal score distribution is generated by the following test. If the quality is zero, then with two over E probability, this, uh, it will be, it will be re reviewed by sending out a score zero by saying that, yeah, this is, uh, uh, an asset with, with uh, low quality. And with the other probability, uh, the, the test will send out a score uh, smoothly distributed from 0.5 to one. Okay, this is conditional on this score, but conditional on this asset is a low quality asset. In the case that this asset is of high quality or quality one. The test doesn't never just review that this is a high quality TSA. Instead, the test pool, uh, will send out a score that is uh, smoothly distributed from 0.5 to one, such that the average of these two will be exponential. So these two, these two conditional uh, distribution of sending out the score will give this marginal distribution of the score. Okay, this is how how uh, how we go back to the test. How a test induce a score distribution like this. So we have already uh, talked about OD testing fee and OD disclosure fee. Now, what if the intermediary consider her original problem where she can use both fees? It turns out that these two channels are conflicting each other, the testing fee and disclosure fee. As you already uh, saw that in the testing fee, the, the highest possible testing fee that the intermediary can charge equals to the option value that induced by the test. So the higher the option value, the higher the testing fee that she can charge. So she would want the option value to be as large as possible. That's why in the case of OD testing fee, you would like a fully re reviewing test. But for the disclosure fee, first, disclosure fee itself decrease the option value because now if you're thinking about the option value by deviating to take the test and disclose the score, now disclosing the score has an additional cost. So it already uh, decreased the option value. 
And further, with this clause of D, you would like to use a noisy test. That's the best way you can use this clause of D. A noisy test also decreases the option value because it decreases the dispersion of the score. So the disclose of each channel will always decrease the option value. So there's a non-trivial trade-off here between the testing fee and disclose of fee. It turns out that in this non-trivial trade-off, disclose of fee completely outweighs the testing fee. But perhaps you already expect this because there is some hint, there are some hints before where if you completely completely shut down the other channel, this close of fee performs better than test fee. So it might give you some sense that probably this close of fee is a more powerful tool. And in fact, in this example, it completely outweighs the testing fee. And we, are, we don't have a good e economic intuition for why this is happening. Uh, because uh, it's, uh, calculating this trade-off is some algebra which is not trivial and it's quite hard to extract the economic meaning of them. But we can provide a mathematical intuition. That is, when looking at the problem of designing testing structure and the value uh, to maximizing uh, profit, if we look at the marginal contribution of the disclosure fee to the value, it will be something exponential which is not surprising because you saw that optimal test is exponential. So it's not surprising that there's something exponential happening. So this is the marginal contribution from the disclosure fee. And the marginal contribution from testing fee, it turns out to be linear of the scale of like X. And here's EX. And you know that the exponential, uh, uh, exponential is greater than this linear form. This in the, the mathematical intuition, why disclosure outweigh the testing fee. Okay, I'm not going to show the proof here, and this is exactly what's happening in the proof. So now we know that among all test fee structure, you can use both fee, you can design any test, the intermediary, intermediaries, uh, maximum profit is the same as what she can get by only using disclosure fee. So opt optimally, she choose no testing fee, a disclosure fee slightly below a half. There's some closeness problem here. It cannot be a half, but just slightly below a half. So uh, strictly speaking, it's a soup problem, not a max problem. And the test produced this exponential distributed score. So you can see that now, even if the score, the asset quality is binary, there are only a good asset, a bad asset, the intermediary would like to introduce some noise in the optimal testing because of, uh, because that she want to induce more disclosure. All right. And another point I want to point out here is that the optimal robust profit is about this is 63% of the surplus a half, which, which means that the intermediary can capture a good amount of the surplus, but must leave some rent with, uh, must leave, leave some rent to, to the agent. She cannot extract all the supply. All right, uh, before going to the general model, this is, I think these are all about uh, binary uh, examples. Is there any questions so far? I didn't see one. Uh, one, one quick question. So, so to, to, to understand this right, you have the intermediary who could produce a test result without noise, but deliberately choose to produce test results of, of lower quality, so to speak. Like to yes, uh, exactly. deliberately add, add add noise or produce something that may or may not be be uh, be correct. Do you have, do you have any feeling about any anecdotal? No, I don't want to say evidence, but sort of anecdotal feeling. If do you have an example where of an industry where you think 
this might be going on. Credit rating agencies, you mentioned GRE scores in the, begin, in the beginning or are the testing centers are really thinking about, ah, we could exactly determine what your score is, but we'd rather just throw in some tests to make some extra bucks. Yeah, in the, in the GRE case, it might not be, it might be the technology, technology constraint. You cannot have a test that fully get, a, fully review the score. Uh, fully review the quality, but um, in the in the fact, so it is not uncommon to see some tests that produced uh, some noises, like some noisy noisiness, like the in finance in financial reading, it's not the precise. I I won't say that's the precise. There's some cost grade. It's not something that's precise, and for example, in the in some cases, like the stress, stress test, stress test is something that deliberately uh, making noisy in purpose. Um, so I don't have a exact example that there's evidence of introducing noise. Uh, one reason is that we never truly observe the true type, the true theta, what's the, what's the true quality. We couldn't observe the quality. So it's hard to say that whether they introduce some noise and, or not, what is the true theta? So this is something that is hard to, it's hard to say. So I, I don't have something in mind that I can, some hard evidence that I can show for that. Yeah, yeah but that- the, the, the way you presented the story was, well, suppose the intermediary could provide a fully revealing test, but then chooses to add some noise. Could I also think of this in somewhat of a different way saying that, oh, in, uh, it, would, it would cost the intermediary some additional resources to provide a fully revealing test. And the intermediary then strategically decides, I'm not gonna invest that much in a fully revealing test. I'd rather have one that's a little noisy. And I try to get it so that the noise roughly traces the, uh, your optimal result here. So instead of a deliberate choice of making it noisy, I just decide not to make it fully revealing. Yeah. That, that, that could be the that could be the case and what we show we actually allowed in the USA in extension we actually allowed in our model that designing a more informative test is more costly that is there's some additional cost for the intermediary to design the, the, the test and the re restriction there is that more informative test is more costly and our main result goes through you you should still see something exponential you should still so I will talk about that in the general, the, the general case, but it's still our main result still holds there. So, yeah, but yeah, but it's actually it's definitely a nice point that um, the technology constraint might be a might be a some might might be a reason that we observe the noisy test that could be, and we allow for that in the model. Thank you. Thank you. Let's go to the general model. Yeah. So in general model, we allow for the asset value to be uh, any distribution, any prior distribution with the lowest value on the support to be theta lower bar and the highest value in the support to be theta upper bar. It doesn't need to be full support, just the lowest value denoted by theta lower bar, highest denoted by theta upper bar. So what makes things complicated here is that there's an additional constraint to care to worry about. In the case with binary, the only constraint of designing a, the only constraint on the score distribution you can induce is that as long as your expected score equals the prior, you are fine. Any distribution of the score, as long as the expected score is a half, that can be induced by some test. But in the case that you have a prior that is not binary. The constraint is that the score distribution, you can, you can induce the score distribution by some test, if and only if it is a mean preserving contraction of the prior. And the idea is simple. First, a fully revealing test can always give you the score distribution equals to the prior. 
So fully informative test is the most accurate test. So any other test will add some noise on top of it. So adding noise will make this score distribution to be less, di uh, less dispersed. So uh, it will, because it will be less, di di uh, sorry, let me, let me rephrase it. As we have argued before, a fully re revealing test give a maximum amount of score dispersion. So adding noise will make it less dispersed in the sense that it is a mean preserving contraction of a fully revealing test. And fully re re revealing test will give you F exactly equals to, uh, G exactly equals to the prior. So anything that you can induce is something that is a mean preserving contraction of the prior. And this is the additional constraint. With this additional constraint, uh, what's changed is that recall that previously we, we don't have this third part. We only have a step and the exponential. A mass point at the below, at the bottom, and the exponential. Now there's a step, exponential, and step. We call it a, this is how we call it a step exponential step distribution. We show that in any prior that exists a, a test B structure such that the test is step exponential step. So the second step could be degenerated as we saw that in the special case of a binary example, the second step is degenerated, but this exponential part and the first step is never degenerated. Okay. And in general, one observation before is, does, uh, is, does not hold here is that it is not no longer true that you you always want to use only disclosure fee. Now testing fee is sometimes positive. For example, under a log concave prior, uh, we can show that testing fee is always positive. The intermediate would like to charge some testing fee, but disclosure fee is always positive. In the example, we already saw so that testing fee can sometimes be positive, sometimes be zero, but in any prior, you always want to use disclosure fee. In some sense, you say that disclosure fee is a powerful tool that you always want to use. Okay, and intermediate profit is tightly bounded by this amount, uh, bounded away from the full uh, information, the full surplus extraction. And this is tightly bound because this bound is reached exactly at a binary support prior, which is theta lower bar and theta upper bar, which is binary prior. Were any questions so far? So this is a short summary of what we did. We studied, we studied the endogenous generation of the hard information by a profit maximizing intermediary. And even though this intermediary creates no social value, the information creates no social value, she can use option value to tempt the agent such that the agent uh, has to take the test and it's delivered. And she used noisy tests, even if she can design an accurate test, she used noisy tests to induce uh, more disclosure in equilibrium. And she's able to capture a good amount of surplus, but still leave the agent with some risk. So one way to look at this result is that we saw so many intermediary in many different marking interactions. Does it mean that we observe them because they are doing something good? Of course, most of them probably they're doing something good, but even if they provide no value, they might, they might also exist. Just because of their existence, they can get a good amount of surplus by creating no value to their trading relationship. So this might be some uh, one way to look at the result. Uh, two more minutes, so I will briefly talk about extension. So, so, uh, so I will stay here for a few seconds to see whether there's any question. 
now we're all excited to see your extension. So, so <laughs> thank you. So it is exciting. So the first one is that uh, what you just uh, asked about the uh, costly testing. So the our result holds the step exponential step uh, score distribution will still be optimal as long as more informative tests is more test uh, more costly, which is intuitive. It is more costly to do a more detailed uh, investigation of the quality. So a special case of this kind of uh, cost is that there's certain set of tests you can choose. Outside of this set, the cost is infinity. And inside of this test set, the cost is zero. So which is the intermediate is constrained to gobble a finite set of initial tests. That is, uh, she cannot design any tests. She has some tests on hand and she can add some noise on, on top of it. Okay. And another extension is about the rich evidence structure, which I think I don't have time to talk in detail. That is basically saying that it doesn't need to be this kind of simple evidence form. That is, uh, I, I have a score S, I can either disclose S or no disclose. It can be some very complicated evidence structure. I have multiple pieces of evidence. I have multiple score. I can choose to disclose only some of them. This could also be uh, allowed in our model and doesn't change the result. Every result holds. I think I don't have time for the literature in case some people want to see the connection to some of the paper. Otherwise, I will just stay on this page. See if there's any questions, comments. Any comments is highly appreciated. 